Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are going to take a look at creating a sickly green flesh. And so to serve as our example here, we have our little Nurgle champion. He has already been assembled and primed with uh, a light gray with the Vallejo surface primer. Uh, he's spraying it around 20 PSI just for those who care. And we're going to give this flesh a base coat of a car flesh uh, with a little bit of Lemayne medium to help thin it out and to help, uh, you know, with flow. Help us get into all the little nooks and crannies. As a lot of these sculpted Nurgle models, they have a lot of little nooks and crannies and, you know, little details. And so we want to get in there without uh, obscuring details. So that's why it's best to work with a thinner uh, paint and apply multiple layers. Now, typically, you only have to apply one or two layers, uh, all depending on how thin you've worked with your paint. And as you can see here, as we work our way around, I'm just simply using a uh, medium... Uh, brush here just to apply the uh, the flesh again I'm not too worried about hitting other areas at the moment as uh, we can always clean those up later on and once we're happy with uh, our layering onto the uh, model we're gonna come in with some Ethonian camo shade this is a really fun color to start off with we're gonna use a little bit of Lemay medium actually not a little bit we're gonna use quite a bit almost like a one-to-one -one mix ratio with the Ethonian camo shade and the Lemay medium and really the whole purpose of this is so that it doesn't go on too heavily we don't want it to like really kind of you know obscure the flesh tone or change the overall value of the flesh tone too drastically we're looking for it just to settle into the recesses and provide the shadows and give us our general overall uh tinting of the flesh but we're not looking for it to sit too heavily and so that's the important part about thinning it down uh, we use medium uh, instead of water just so that uh, it flows uh, much more like a paint rather than kind of flowing like an ink or anything like that. And as you can see there, it gives us a really great tone to start off with our flesh tone. And you can see it already looks really sickly and ill. Drew Tree Violet is next with a uh, helping of Lemay Medium. Again, we are going to use this in almost like a one-to-one -one fashion. We're going to use a little bit of Flow Aid here because, again, we, we want this to reside within the recesses but not change the uh, overall surface value too drastically. And as you can see, we apply it to the model and you can see how it just simply goes into the recesses. It pulls up in some little divots and dimples and stuff like that, but otherwise it's not uh, as heavy as normally you would use Drew Tree Violet. Uh, I allow a little bit more to uh, reside within the fingers and things like that, anywhere where I want to create some deep dark shadow points or anything like that. But otherwise I just go around and work on like the little sores, uh, the elbow joints, anywhere that would kind of have, you know, uh, this kind of distress, uh, you know, I was kind of going for a bit of a rigor mortis kind of feeling as well. A little bit under the underarms, a little the back of the behind the head, under his little uh, rolls and such, under his belly. All these areas, really a lot of color gets concentrated around the belly. Uh, and also the way that strap is kind of digging into his, uh, into his chest there. You know, just show to like, you know, uh, irritation and things like that, right? Cardboard Crimson is next, and we're going to thin this out just a little bit, not too much, really just the dampness of the brush. And very carefully here, we're going to apply this around the sores as well as around that big wound in his belly, where basically his belly's kind of popped open and all his guts are spilling out and all kind of gross like that. Again, this is for creating a, a sickly green, uh, green flesh, but again you really do need these other colors that play on the model especially if you're going with nurgle models um you know or even zombies this will work well for creating you know uh zombies that look like you know they've been rotten for a while but yet there's still a little bit of color in their flesh and so this is a really fun way of uh keeping that kind of uh undead feeling and you know keeping it kind of gross Next, we're going to come back in with some Rakar Flesh, and we are going to mix this with some Pallid Witch Flesh. We're going to mix these in roughly a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Take a fairly heavy helping onto my palette, and of course, like, like as I mentioned, we're going to mix this in a one-to-one. -one. And this is going to be our highlights. We could start off with some Rakar Flesh to really kind of build the color up, and if you so felt like doing it, then by all means, uh, you will get a, a greater graduation of color and uh, transition, as long as you're very careful, of course, you, uh, you know, highlighting the uppermost portions. Uh, I'm not really going for any kind of particular type of highlighting scheme. I'm highlighting the edges of the wounds, highlighting the big wound on his belly, uh, going around highlighting uh, tops of the uh, pectoral muscles. Uh, well, not really muscles, but you know, his, his pectorials. 
uh, top of the shoulder blades, uh, top of the forearm kind of thing. It's just really uh, concentrating more, I guess, on the, uh, the wounds themselves because really that is where the eye will immediately be drawn in here. Just very carefully kind of picking up some areas, uh, just elongating some of these highlights, just along larger uh, mass groups on the flesh. You can see like on the elbow joint and the bicep, a little bit on the tricep. You can see here on his little rolls. We're catching just the top portion of his rolls as well as his little, um, what are they called, like love handles or whatever. Uh, you know what I mean. So again, we're just catching just the top points here, catching the edges of the uh, with the wounds themselves. And that really kind of just brings out like all that, that nasty discoloration in his flesh. He still has that green quality to him, but again, you can see you can see how now the flesh and the purple are starting to really kind of dominate to the eye. And so we will fix that later on. Next is a pallid witch flesh. And this is just a really small highlight that's going to go around some of the high points on some of these areas. Again, just to make them kind of brighter, really kind of, you know, pick out some of the details here, catching just the top of the belly. And also, you know, picking out some of the little folds and things like that. All little nasty little areas here, top of his knuckles. Again, just, you know, really kind of bring out the... Uh, the texture and details onto the model ends of his fingertips again the edges of the wounds not the whole length of the wounds just really more along the bottom edges of them again if you really want to introduce like a texture or anything like that now you can probably do it you know especially on bigger areas like the shoulders and the top of the uh the bicep and things like that as you can see there, so now that that is done, now you can pretty much leave it like that if you're so happy with the, with the look. But here we're going to come back in with some Athonian Camo Shade. And we are going to basically pull these colors back down a bit because, you know, it does seem fairly bright. He's got a very good undead look to him. You see we're going to use some Lamedium, uh, Lamein Medium and Flow 8 again with this mixture. Uh, but again, because we, we're just looking just to tint the, the, uh, the surfaces. We're not looking to, uh, you know change too drastically the values and you can see we'll bring back that green back in some areas looks kind of like it just kind of blobbed right in but don't worry i'll, I'll move it around and uh you know don't let it uh, pool up too heavily anywhere again this is really going to be applied pretty much to the entirety of the flesh areas again just to bring a bit more of that green back into it and allow a lot more of that kind of bright yellowy green quality and the thorium camera machine is really great because it also has a brown quality to it which is works really well for flesh tones as well and then if need be we're gonna come back in with some cardboard crimson Again, this is just to reestablish the irritation of the uh, of the uh, the wounds and things like that, and really kind of just bring that contrast back into the model. And again, when you're dealing with uh, rotten flesh and sickly flesh and what have you, Nurgle models in general, you really do want these contrasts uh, to occur on the model. As uh, oftentimes, just pure green models or pure brown models. I mean, they look fine, but they don't have that level of Nurgle sickliness, and uh, that's really key factor to the character of, you know, painting a model to a Nurgle illness kind of state. But that is it. Once that we allow that to dry, he's all ready to carry on to the next phase. But that is it. It's, it's a series of glazes. Uh, you know, like you can really kind of start with the brightest point and work your way down. You can start with the midpoint and work your way up like we did here. But that's it. We've got even more painting tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. You can watch another one today about how I finish off doing the Nurgle's uh, sores and pus. Just click on the link in the video description below and watch it right now. If you don't have a Mini Wargaming Vault membership, you can click on the link and sign up for a free 7-day trial. Make sure that you get the Silver membership so you get access to painting tutorials. You'll get instant access to over a 1,000 painting tutorials already in the vault. And so thank you for watching and happy Wargaming.